All right. Are we like? Are we gonna just say hello, hello? Yes. <clears throat> wow, this is weird. <laughs> I feel like I'm not being here for ages. I know. Hello, welcome to Reform My Mind episode six. Oh, uh, I thought you have I got it right? right. <laughs> I'm going, oh, I'm doubting myself then. Oh my yeah. God, I know. Episode six, we're back, guys. We've been out for a bit. We've, we've had a little holiday, haven't we? Yeah. We've been on annual leave. Annual leave. <laughs> I wish. We've been so busy with work and... And a bit like, overwhelmed. Yeah, a bit overwhelmed. That yeah. Reason. I think that's the right word, actually. Yeah, we have been a bit overwhelmed. And I think we just weren't in the right frame of mind to, like, film, weren't we? Mm-hmm. So we just thought... We'll just have a bit of a breather and just come back fresh. Yeah, and actually, I think it's kind of fit, really, with everything that we've been talking yeah. about, that sometimes life just gets on top of you, and yeah. you do feel a little bit overwhelmed, and you have to take a break from things, but it's important that you know mm. that time will pass. And it's fine to take a break. It, it kind of just gives you the opportunity to just gather your thoughts, see how you're feeling, just have a mini holiday if you want to call it holiday we we actually haven't been on holiday well we've been to london actually a couple of times but in the couple of weeks we've been in london an awful lot but it's it's been nice it's uh i've enjoyed being in a city it's crazy though isn't it like we were we were saying how fast paced it all, all is in london we were just like we arrived in London we were lost weren't we because we come from such a small town that you know big cities I mean I love them but wow they can get overwhelming can't they yeah and I just felt a bit like okay I need to go back to like the woods (laughs) the bobby woods (laughs) yeah I think it's just a recognition really that yeah things sometimes can get a bit much but what we've said this morning, we've just spent two hours because we haven't even really seen each other that much, have no, we? It's been the longest we've it not has. seen each other. Yeah, and we've spent two hours this morning and you just feel like instantly yeah. better. Mm, we're I just, just getting ready and we're just like been chatting for ages. I just thought, oh, do you know, sometimes you just need that just long chat and just get everything, you know, off your chest and whatever's been on your mind for the last couple of weeks and... It just really shows you the importance of having people close to you and how really detrimental it is to your mental health, isn't it? That if you don't, if you're on your own for a long time and you don't have people around you to speak to, it really does, I mean, it overwhelms me a lot. Mm. I don't know about you, but it just really gets to me when I'm just like... I think I've really noticed it these past few weeks because Mm. I've been so, so busy with work. Like, the main job that I do. Yeah. It's just that has been full on. And I think it's not left me any time at all for the things that I enjoy. So, Mm. uh, you know, friends and family are really, really important to me. And, you know, that's what makes me happy. That's, you know, spending time with people, laughing and joking. And Mm. and I really noticed that I've missed that quite a lot. And I've felt almost like I've not been myself. Mm. And although I think I've been so busy and had loads of things to do and keep me distracted and had loads of people around me in terms of, you know, going up and down to London and being in work, it's not meaningful because you're not having those meaningful connections or mm. those meaningful conversations. And I think, yeah, that's what's really affected me. Yeah, it, 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 it does make sense though, doesn't it? Because that kind of it goes into what we're going to talk about today. I think, you know, being busy is great. And I mean, it's life, it will happen to everyone. But sometimes, you know, being around people that you have meaningful conversations, and you do feel your authentic self is really important. And I know a lot of people go, yeah, but you're so busy. And you know, you've got so much going on, like, you know, that's kind of you're missing the point there basically because you're not you're being busy but you then go home on your own and you don't still don't feel like you've had that really mm-hmm. meaningful nice quality time with someone uh, you you get yeah, you've been surrounded by people but you probably haven't had the quality of the conversations that you'd probably have with someone close to you so i think it kind of just 
you know, brings us back to this society right now, how everything is fast paced. Let's surround ourselves with loads of people. But yet, are you really happy being surrounded by, you know, so many people? Or are you just doing it just to kind of, you know, try and hide other things in a way of like maybe you're unhappy about something or you're not feeling okay about something and it's just kind of it's sad isn't it how we always try you've made such a good point there as well because I think you know for me it's it's so easy isn't it and I think for a lot of people to to just hide yourself away and maybe distract yourself by being busy and think Mm. oh well I've got so many things to do and you know I I couldn't possibly make time for to see my friends or I couldn't possibly make time to go out for a walk or or even go to the gym for example they're the important things that we know have such a positive impact on our mental health and it's like you know, we're going to go out at the weekend, which yeah. I'm really excited for. I, I feel like, <laughs> what the hell has happened? Like, we literally haven't been anywhere no. other than if there's been work or, like, trips in there to, like, yeah. London. But it's mad, isn't it? It's just, like, I almost don't know how to... What, what am I going to wear? <laughs> well, that trip that we went on to London was for my birthday. That was nearly a month ago. Can yeah, you that, that is crazy, isn't it? That but, is mad. So we're going out this weekend and honestly, I've been really feeling as though oh, I just, oh, how am I going to prepare for it? I've got no time to get ready. I'm just feel up, literally up to here, like full yeah. of everything, so stressed out. But then the other part of me knows uh, how much of a good time that we'll have and how needed it is to just make that effort and push yourself out your comfort zone to do something that you might not think you want to do, but really, you know, it's good for you. But I also think the importance of making sure that you make time for your friends and every. I know, you know, it's, oh, yeah, but I don't have time, like you said. Yes, but I, I'm, I believe a lot that if you really want to make time for someone, you will. And it comes down to how important that person is for you in your life and how you everyone can make time it doesn't matter how busy you are it's just taking that initiative to to do so and knowing like you said knowing that you know having that really nice time with your friends is going to help you and it's going to give you that boost of energy for the week ahead and if anything you're only going to benefit from it to be honest and you know it's not even just about going out with friends isn't it because I guess I'm sat here thinking you know we're really really lucky to have a close relationship you know Mm. we've got our other friends Katie as well who we're really looking forward to seeing because we haven't seen her no we haven't either but I think it's just the small things so even getting yourself out for a walk so you said this morning you just went for a walk in the pine woods and how beneficial that was to your mood and just boosting you Mm -hmm. and we've all got a tendency I think to hide ourselves away when things feel really overwhelming and you know we're stressed or we're struggling to cope with things we might just hide beneath or you know staying in in your pajamas and watching tv yeah it's good every now and again but you do need to get your body moving and you need to get those kind of you know those feel good hormones producing again in your body and you know getting outside talking to people getting some fresh air Mm. if you can you know exercising as well is really really important and a lot of the time they're all the things that go out the window aren't they when you're feeling low especially when you're going through a hard time I'm I'm guilty of the you know taking myself away from the situation and kind of secluding myself and I'm learning obviously I'm learning about how I deal with certain situations in my life but I think that's the biggest issue I've got and you've noticed that pattern Mm. you you know straight away like if I've been a bit quiet or I've not gone out or like you said exercising is great but when you're in that mental state you don't feel like getting up to go and exercise. It's just not one of them things that's on your mind. I know for a lot of people, it's got a different effect. You know, they just want to get out and go and exercise. And But for me, even although I love it a lot, I just sometimes, if I'm having a hard time, I just cannot even think of doing that. And just doing, you're just going for that little walk. 
you're still, you know, you're out, you're exercising a little bit. It's nothing too much to to do, but you're getting out there. You're seeing the world. You you're bumping into people. You know, you you just get yourself out mm-hmm. there. I just think that's the biggest one for me. The walks is always. I, I said to you this morning, the night. I just, I just was a bit like, oh, I was a bit tired and couldn't be bothered with a lot. And I just thought, do you know what? I'm just going to go for a little walk before I go and see Kay because I just think that's just going to help. And yeah, it's just clean, changed man. my mood completely. Obviously, luckily the sun was out and that helped me a lot. <laughs> yeah, it does me I know, too. I the know, sun is like such a massive mood. I don't booster. think that walk would have been as nice if it was windy and rainy, to be honest. But, you know, it's about knowing what, what is right for you. And I think, you know, the, there's a term like self-care and there's an element of a lot of people think that self-care is being indulgent or it's being selfish or, mm-hmm. you know, I've got a bit of, of time, I should be doing this job or I should be focusing on that job. When in actual fact, we've got to take care of ourselves before we're able to kind of function for others. Mm-hmm. And I think even something just as simple as having half an hour to just have a nice bath if you're not feeling well you know like well enough or in yourself you know it's it's the little things that not Mm. necessarily the big things that are going to make a a small difference yeah I mean I I get it and I just think it's hard isn't it if you think about it because I've been put in situations before where I know what's right to do and I know exactly what's going to get me out of that mood but sometimes you're just not doing it because you've just not got the willpower to do it and it's happened so many times to me when I was like I just I know exactly what I have to do why am I not doing it why can I not just get out of this like bubble down in my head and it's really difficult to help Mm. people how to get out of that little bubble of their own and I think that was my biggest issue like how what is the click in your head? What happens? How do you just get up and just go? Do you genuinely just have to go, right, that's it. Get up now and just literally willpower. Or is there anything else that we could possibly do to help us with this Mm. in a way of maybe we don't feel like doing that, but what do we do next? How do we navigate it in a way of to give us that boost of energy in a way to do something and get up and go yeah I think a lot of the time when people are in a rut like that most of the time it's because of negative thought patterns and it's almost like a vicious cycle so you know you tell yourself oh you know I can't do that or or can't be bothered with that and then you know, that then kind of impacts on your mood. So if if you're having those negative thoughts, Mm -hmm. it's going to start impacting and and maybe you've got your mood slow or you start to feel anxious about things and then that really impacts your behaviour then because you'll withdraw from things. You know, if you're anxious about doing something or you're anxious about going out and seeing friends because you don't feel yourself and you're worried what people might think, then you avoid those situations Mm. or if you're feeling really lethargic and quite low and you just can't be bothered then you'll still avoid those situations but for different reasons Mm. and then what happens is that that cycle feeds in again to your negative thoughts so it may well be that you've avoided going out to see your friends so you think oh well what might they think of me or were they talking about me because I didn't turn or or you know what what are they going to say next time are they not going to invite me next time or you know oh I'm just a really bad friend because I didn't go out or I'm a really bad mum because I didn't take my child Mm. out to the park because I couldn't be bothered and and the cycle just feeds itself because those negative thoughts will then feed in again Yeah. yeah and what you'll find is people who are really stuck in that cycle it just becomes, you know, it kind of becomes stronger and stronger and it becomes more difficult to come out of. Mm. And it's about being aware of those negative thought patterns because it's really difficult to intervene at a kind of a point in in your emotions or, or those physical feelings. I mean, we can do a lot of breath work maybe to calm anxious feelings, for example, And yeah, we can 
push ourselves out of our comfort zone and, and put us, you know, make sure we go out or make sure we do something that we're avoiding to do. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, you've got to acknowledge that you're not your thoughts. So your thoughts can be controlled. Um, we have hundreds of thousands of thoughts a day and the majority of them are are subconscious thoughts so you don't think about thinking if that makes sense yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you have those automatic thoughts through your experiences and you know we spoke about early on in the, the episodes about our internal work and models coming from our childhood or our relationships around us and and we build up expectations of how the world is And those automatic thoughts stem from that. So it's about being aware of when those thoughts are creeping in and actively stopping yourself. And this is where this idea of those kind of positive affirmations come in and kind of, you know, repeating nice things and speaking kind words to yourself. Because it's about challenging those negative thoughts, you know, thinking, okay, well, stop, actually. Is that really what people are thinking? Or is that really what's going to ha- happen if I go to that event or if I go to the shops looking like this will people really think oh my god what's mm-hmm. happened to her or in actual fact will people s- just be so busy with their own day and their own thoughts and what's mm-hmm. going on in their own lives that they won't even notice it yeah well I <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that because every time I'm not feeling it and I'm having a bit of a bad day that's exactly where I when I bumped into everyone in the shops and it's just like oh really like today does it have to be today where I literally bump into everyone that I know like I just when you just do not want to make a conversation that but that's just what life is you you will maybe bump into them for whatever reasons but I just feel like with me, whenever I get like that, so if I had a couple of days where I've just completely taken myself out, not seen anyone, obviously you see my kids because I see them every day, but it's really difficult to then go from that to go into an event or go out or because you've had too much of that time mm. where you've just been in your own little bubble. And I think that's the most difficult like step to take when you've had a couple of days like that on your own and you just go oh no like no I just don't want to I'm too scared I'm too this Mm. like what if I come across a bit like this you know I'm not in the right mind 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 frame like the way I'm thinking because then again when you feel when you're thinking like that you're not gonna be not necessarily the nicest person but you're not gonna respond to things the same way that you would normally Mm. do that's you know yeah that's to take in consideration if somebody's going through a hard time not that i'm saying that they're not going to be kind but they're just not going to respond in the same way because they've got a lot going on in their head so they've they will not be thinking how they will be reacting straight away so then you could be interpreted the wrong way especially definitely and I just want to bring you back to the point that you made first about when you get into those ruts of maybe being you know staying in or being alone or being isolated by yourself for a period of time it could be a couple of days it could be a couple of weeks it could be a couple of months depending on what's happened to you or what you've experienced it can be really difficult to then break that pattern of behavior and maybe go out and and put yourself out there and speak to people or whether it's going back to work, somebody could have been off work or they could have had a breakup and just didn't want to really socialize with people. And Mm. it's important to be aware of what's happening in your brain in those types of situations, because have you heard the saying you know we're creatures of habit and and we really are because our brains will take the shortcut so whatever we're used to doing our brains will automatically always go there because it's it's habit it's comfort it's safety we seek out what we're used to because actually feeling uncomfortable or pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone it, it starts to release those those anxious hormones that you know those feelings that start pumping around our body so I think it's important to be aware of that if you don't actively challenge or or push yourself through 
then you can become stuck in that cycle for a while for a while and it Mm -hmm. will you know keep going round and unless you actively take a change or make a stance and it's really important for people to be aware that you know our mental health it's not just a chemical imbalance in the brain so it's not a a medicalized condition if you like that's going to be fixed by a pill because oh you've got a chemical imbalance it's not about that our mental health is about how we experience the environment and you know the vast majority of you, you know poor mental health is caused by our environment and our experiences of what's happening around us Mm -hmm. and in the same sense that can also keep cycles going as well Mm -hmm. so it's It's a work in progress though I feel like mental health it that's the probably the biggest definition of it it's constantly chipping at it and working at it at all times because it just shows you that when you do get into a bad place If you don't carry on speaking kindly to yourself every day and taking the steps, little steps, we're not talking big steps because, you know, we all have bad days and we don't feel like doing the big thing that day, you know, but just doing those little tiny little steps every day would just make it easier for when you have to make that step to get out and finally start socializing again and do this and do that. And I've noticed that when I'm having a really hard time, those really, really like unhealthy habits creep in like so quickly. Like honestly, it just happens overnight. And you know, habits that you probably haven't had for years or months actually that have been so hard to overcome, they creep in in literally a matter of seconds mm-hmm. when you are getting to that stage where you are in whatever might be happening in your life. It's really interesting and I kind of find it quite interesting the way all these old patterns can creep in so quickly and overtake all of the really hard work that you've done for years to not get into those habits again. It's ingrained patterns, isn't it? And, you know, when you were speaking then, it actually made me think about... um, what we, we've mentioned that we really want to speak to, and I think we, we will give it the, the time it deserves, but self-sabotage has just yeah. really come to mind then because you self-sabotage is kind of an element of that. So it's, it's fallen back into those bad habits, but then it's kind of reinforcing those bad habits with the negative thoughts because you think, for example, you know, oh, well, no one wants me there anyway, so I, I I won't phone anybody and I won't respond to text messages because, well, wh- what good am I to them anyway? They're not going to miss me. And it's that, it's what it's doing is it's feeding into those patterns. Maybe your attachment style that you've had when you were younger, maybe those kinds of internal working models that you've built up whereby maybe you've been let down in the past, for example, and your kind of safety mechanism is to push people away before you can get hurt. And although that that might not be what's happening in that situation now, although our brains are really, really clever, they're also really, really just process driven and they will revert back to those ingrained patterns of, well, I've got to reject people before they reject me first because it's keeping myself safe. And by rejecting people first, it means that I won't experience all of this pain or hurt that I've had in the past. And so that's how we self-sabotage because we may not be experiencing that pain and hurt now, but our brain is anticipating that we will. Yeah, well, I I was that person a couple of years ago, actually. Did you see me smiling yeah. then when you were talking? I was like, mm, yeah, God. <laughs> no, that guys, that was me a couple of years ago. And it was really tough, actually, to get out of that. That really vicious cycle it was horrible, in fact. And I'm not like that anymore. I can still get there now and then. You know, I'm not going to lie. It's, it happens. It creeps in sometimes where I do literally take myself out completely and just be like, oh, yeah, like you said, they don't really want me there anyway. So I might as well just not even be bothered, you know, or making an effort or whatever it might be. And I really was struggling with this for years. We're talking a couple of years ago now. And I've slowly grown out of it where with confidence and everything that I've built over years, it's become a little bit better where 
actually, it might not be like you said, the same outcome this time. So why not? Like, why keep myself in that horrible torture in my head where I keep saying all these things to myself that people don't want me there or people, you know, I used to be that person. Oh, if they didn't tell you, don't ask. If yeah. they didn't invite you, don't don't ask them where you're going and why you can't go. I was that person, really like quite rigid in a way of like, oh well, they've not told me they're going out. Then why why I'm not going to ask because they obviously don't want me there, and it's just not really healthy way of being. I think, and I actually seen a couple of TikToks with that saying, and it's literally all over social media. You know, if you, you don't you don't want me that you like don't ask questions if they don't tell yeah. you and i think that's kind of it's a double standard situation because you think yeah great in certain situations we're not saying that because there, there are people that are rude and take advantage and yeah you know we know the situation but i just don't think that that's a really great mentality to have to go ahead because that's just going to really get you into a a horrible hole where you're just going to be not wanting to make any sort of effort yeah. with anyone at any point because you're just going to think that what's the point yeah and i think you've got to be so careful haven't you with loads of those tiktok trends honestly and... there's so many at the moment that i've noticed and the fact that we're talking about this it just came to my attention that i've and this happened a couple of days ago where i've seen this tiktok going around and you know i stopped and i rewatched it again and it's very rare that you go back on a tiktok don't you and you rewatch something you're just constantly flicking but i just went i don't know how i feel about that you know mm. like yeah great in some situations but really is that really what well, you should be advertising people who will absolutely buy into that concept and it's so easy to yeah. so if we use the example for well it could be friendships or it could be relationships you know that thing of well you know don't text them first or oh, don't no. don't apologize first if you've I had know. an argument things like that and i guess just using your example you know what what can we do about it it's again challenging those negative thoughts so for you saying you know well they've not asked me to go out. So, you know, that must mean that they don't want me there. You know, I'm not important to them or they don't like me or have I done something wrong last time? Mm. And you quickly get into the, those cycles and you won't even notice that you, you're thinking those things. It happens things. so quick though. It literally happens that quick. Yeah, it will do. And it's really important at the time to actively challenge those thoughts. So if somebody hasn't called you back for example or didn't answer the phone didn't call you back oh you know they they mustn't want to be my friend anymore or they mustn't want to speak to me or they they don't want to go out again it's kind of like actually could they just be really really busy or you know maybe something's happened in that time frame or you know maybe they got back to me but it hasn't come through what, you know, just different. I'm not using very good examples, but <laughs> you know, just, just challenge the thought process. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm, I hate that whole, you know, whoever texts first and then you have to wait and then play the games and things. I and I just think, no. honestly, guys, we're not five years old for God's sake. Like if you want to text them back, just text them back. Whoever yeah. it is, uh, you know, it can be your friend. It can be someone that you really like, I mean, who cares? Like, if you want to say something to someone, might as well just say it for God's I sake. Because otherwise, what's going on? Do you know what? Though as well, I just think it's so immature. It's so unattractive games. as well. Yeah. It's like, come on, yeah. really? Are we doing really this thing that yeah. who texts first? Or, oh, let me just let, let them. I'm not going to check my message. I'll just let them wait. Right. You're on your phone. You're online. You can check your phone. They know that you're online. So might as well just not make yourself look stupid. But it's just, it, but that's how petty some people yeah. get. And it, it just shows you the, the differences that, but again, that person that's maybe not replying to you might be going through a hard time and might, they might need your message. Hey, are you sure you're okay? Mm. You, do you need to talk? You know, you need yeah. people that are more forward to I, ask. I think as well, actually, just picking up on that, if you are on the other side of a friend who has maybe gone a little bit off the radar, who, you know, is struggling a little bit, is maybe not, you know, getting back to you, you know, 
you're aware that, or you might not be aware that they're having a tough time, but just a text message, like you said, hey, you don't have to respond. Um, just letting you know that I'm thinking of you. I'm here if you need me. Yeah. And that's the best thing. It's about keeping contact. It's not about that polar opposite, like you said, because that can really quickly happen in a relationship or in a friendship whereby someone might be having a difficult time yeah. and they may have retreated or withdrawn into themselves a little bit, not responding or being so busy that they, they're unable to, it can quickly get another person's back up. Like, well, why aren't they responding to me? You know, do, am I not important to them? Do they? And that relationship can then kind of really struggle because of miscommunication. I've had I've had relationships like that fizz, fizzled out in my in my life. Oh my god, so many, and it, it's a shame. It's a shame because it's kind of a bit of a maturity thing, and you grow and you learn. But oh god, the amount of times that's happened, and again, it was in 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 some ways it was my fault as well because I could have taken the initiative to make a bit more of an effort, but I didn't at the time. Um, Because I didn't know anything better, you know, I still had a lot of growing up to do and like mature and understand that there's not, it doesn't work like that. And sometimes this has to be an effort from both sides. And again, gauging the situation and reading your, you know, like how... You know, you need to understand your friends. You need to pay attention because I think half the times people don't actually pay attention to their friends. You know, yeah, 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 we're here having a great time. But are you actually knowing what they're going through? Or are you just going out drinking yeah, and having sit, a great like time? Like surface level friendship. Yeah, and it just brings you back to, well, if you didn't notice that your friend was a bit quiet, then I'm sorry, but that's your fault mm -hmm. because it, it is on you because you've not taken the time to gauge the situation that that friend, it's not okay and needs you right now. And you don't have to go into it. You don't have to text them a long message and go, oh, you know, and go on. Because maybe that's not the right thing to do. But just like you said, a simple text, I'm here for you. If you need me, you know where I am. Don't go into it. Just make them comfortable to know that they can come to you whenever they need you, do you know what I mean? Rather yeah. than either be quiet or just make a fuss of it yeah. kind of situation. It's just unnecessary, isn't it? It is being aware, isn't it? Like you've just I said think about, it's the biggest thing, yeah. to be honest. It, it's other people's experiences. And I I always kind of think that you, you, you have your own, you have your own world, don't you? You have your own bubble. Yeah, we all do. We all live in our own bubble, but it's about, being consciously aware of what's happening outside of that yeah. and that everybody brings their own experiences their own kinds of experiences come out all of the time in their responses in their reactions mm -hmm. and you're not able to control those responses or reactions and you don't always have to respond or react to them if somebody is being a bit off with you or is withdrawn or, you know, whatever, yes, yeah, send them the message like you've said as well. Acknowledge that it's not a bearing on you. If somebody's being off with you, unless you've done something really bad and you're aware of what you've yeah, done. Yeah, obviously. It's, if, if you genuinely haven't, you know, done anything or said anything, then have that awareness that something else could be going on for them and it might not even be something that they're even aware of themselves yeah also it's... a text message to say are you okay take, takes two seconds yeah less actually yeah <laughs> so no we're not buying into i was too busy to see if you're okay you just weren't bothered so yeah. i think that's again goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the episode you know nobody's too busy and honestly, I know there's busy people out there, but to check on your friends for a couple of seconds in that day, it doesn't take a lot. And that can make a world of a difference to them. You know, or, you know, they feel seen, they feel like somebody cares about them. I just think self-awareness, every single episode we bring it up because I think it's just the most important thing. And we will bring it up every episode because yeah. I feel like it needs to be said as much as possible because people just don't seem yeah. to understand that being self-aware is 
crucial. Yeah. But it's being aware as well that you do have to look after your own well-being as well. Yeah. So it's thinking about, for example, you know, for me, <laughs> I've been so busy recently. I've, you know, you do, you, you start, your diet goes, doesn't it? So you start oh, eating that's rubbish. That's the first one. And then you think it, it, it quickly feeds, doesn't it? Then <laughs> feeds, actually, yeah, it definitely does. But it feeds into <laughs> feeds the next rubbish. thing. Yeah, it feeds <laughs> rubbish. Yeah, it does. It feeds into the next thing where you're like, oh, well, I may as well just carry on eating now because I had a chocolate bar yesterday. And, and before I know it, I've had, I have actually had five chocolate bars. <gasps> Every day. I did eat a lot not, of chocolate not, not recently five every as well, day, but actually. like five times. Do you know, week. my daughter actually said to me, Mummy, you, you eating a lot of chocolate recently. And I was like, oh. I was <laughs> like, pardon me? Like, what do you mean? And she's like, no, no, no. You eating all my chocolate. She's noticed that her chocolate's going, going. quicker than normal. <laughs> and she, she said to me, I know it's not my brother. So I know yeah. it's you because my brother can't reach up there. So I know it's you. And I was like, mm. <laughs> okay, yeah, I've been caught. <laughs> but I think it's important as well for people to know that if, if they are in a rut, that it doesn't have to last, it, it will pass. So I think for me, uh, you know, the, the thing what's what's getting me through or what has got me through the last few weeks is knowing, okay, well, this, this is not me. This is not who I usually am. This is just a small period in time where I know I'm gonna get through. And it's this idea that emotions come and go. Yeah, they can last a little while and, it can become a little bit of a rut, but it doesn't have to define who you are. And there are steps that you can take that will pull you out of that situation. Mm -hmm. So things like looking after yourself, you know, eating well, getting enough sleep, even the, the very, very basics are really, really important. Just small steps to start kind of lifting that, you know, well, expectation you, of you just mentioned the two things that go out the window whenever i'm not feeling great i mean eating and sleeping you know how bad i am with my sleep i would literally my body would be so shattered but my mind won't let me go to sleep so it's like in you're in that vicious circle of i'm so tired and i know i've got literally hardly to no energy I can't go to sleep. So you just go in bed and you just sit there and just think, oh, no, I might as well just stay up and do mm. something rather than just sit in here. And that's my first, that's the biggest triggers for me. Like, I know when it's happening because I can't sleep. And it's not just the odd night, you know, because we all can have a bad sleep now and then. But I, it kind of becomes a pattern again where I'm every night going to bed later than normal. And then the following week, it's a little bit later again. And then I'm, you know, then you get into the cycle where you're just feeling rubbish in the day because yeah. you've not had sleep. So then you're back into yeah. that horrible, and you know. I, I'm the opposite to you. So I go really, really tired. So I will want to go to bed really, really early. And I do get up early. That often contributes to it. But what I'll find is I'll go to bed really early and then I'll wake up really early mm. and then I can't get back to sleep. And then so I'm tired even earlier or throughout the day. I'm I'm really yeah. tired. I've got no energy. I'm falling asleep. So it can definitely it, it's individual, isn't it? It's what it's going back to the basics, mm. a healthy diet and a good sleep. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it, I know it sounds easy, but it's not. It no. really isn't. And when these two don't go together and you're not having the balance between them, everything else falls apart around you in a way of, if you're not, I mean, think about the amount of days that maybe you've had like a rubbish diet and you just felt awful at the end of the day. And then you, then that ruins your sleep as well. So then there you go. You completely just, we're all guilty of it. I mean, I can't, you can't possibly stay away from it all the time. It's going to happen eventually with anything if you're stressed or not stressed you can have days like that but i just think it's important for people to know that the basic little yeah. things can really really help i think as well reducing our stress is massive because i don't know if people kind of understand the the really serious impact stress can have on no, us i don't think they but do physically as well so when you're stressed, your body releases stress hormones, so neurochemicals. Yeah. 
into our bloodstream, which can be toxic in large quantities. So in really small quantities, they'll serve a purpose. So cortisol and adrenaline, for example, would get your kind of heart racing, get your blood pumping. Is that chronic stress? Is that what it's called? Chronic stress, yeah, yeah, is when it's long term. So what happens with those kinds of chemicals, really, if you like, is that if they're prolonged in the body for a a lot chronic stress for a long period of time, if you're constantly pumping them out, constantly Mm -hmm. feeling stressed, it puts pressure on kinds of your internal organs. So it raises inflammation in the body and inflammation is a really leading cause of long-term chronic health conditions. So it, it impacts your heart, it impacts your kidneys, it impacts all of the kind of the major functioning organs in your body Mm. so it's really important that people actively reduce their stress levels so if you are I don't know if you've ever felt stressed and you know I know for me that I start getting that that kind of tightening in in my chest and I'll think (gasps) no I feel like I'm gonna faint it takes almost the feeling of before you faint yeah Yeah, 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 it is And a lot of the time, those feelings will make people panic and they'll feel as though there's something wrong with them. And that then increases the anxiety mm. and, it, and it keeps those chemicals pumping through your, blo- your, your body, basically. Yeah. However, it's really important that you, to stop anxiety or, or a panic or that feeling. For example, when I was getting those kinds of that tightening or those flutters recently, I was telling myself, you know, this'll this'll pass all it is is my body kind of responding to me thinking about everything that I've got to do (laughs) basically and once you start kind of what you've got to ultimately suppress those those chemicals by calming down your nervous system so activating your your relax and response nervous system to to counteract the chemicals and balance out balance and it's about being aware that when you do start feeling your heart fluttering or you know you you feel like your chest is tightening or you're having like I don't know your jelly legs or you know butterflies in your tummy it's just your biological stress response system Mm -hmm. doing its job properly and it'll pass oh god I my my body reacts so quickly like I get like really tingly like you know, in my in my 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 fingers and my legs, like to to the point that I think I'm gonna pass out. You know that feeling right before passing out, yeah. and it I get that usually with like not necessarily prolonged stress, as in like if I've been stressed about something for a long t- a long time, it's more like shock, like something that shocked me and stressed me like on the spot. I literally my body just goes like nope no what's going on like this is this is like alerting me basically Mm -hmm. that's too much what's going on and I just get the bit even when you're nervous again like I can get a bit like that as well like I remember before my exams oh my god I was so like on verge of passing Mm -hmm. out because I was too nervous it's normal and that's what I really want to get across there like negative feelings are normal they're a completely normal human emotion and it's about not necessarily embracing them but acknowledging them and knowing that they'll pass it's a normal not a bad thing necessarily but knowing that they will pass that's like the biggest reassurance ever yeah you know like you can't i think when it gets really difficult for people is when they know that it's coming like the negative thought and then they panic and then they think the worst and it's like well yeah it might be the worst right now in this second while you're thinking about it but it will go because maybe a couple of minutes ago you didn't have this thought and everything was okay so it everything comes and goes so I just think whenever you're in really that bad rut like you said just make sure that you carry on telling that to yourself. It will pass. It'll yeah. pass. It'll pass. And I think a lot of the time now, I really just want to mention that our negative thoughts can can stem from past experiences or of past course. memories that people just sometimes can't shake off. And I think it's it's important to kind of to work 
work through that as mm-hmm. well and and think about how you want your preferred future to be what do you want your preferred future to look like so I know we're not going to talk about anything in too much depth but it's about you do have the power to make a better future and if you are really kind of stuck in that negative cycle do you want to kind of Mm. stay that way well we all know what we have to do come on we all do deep down we when we want something we all know what we want to do is the case of taking the actions to do what we need to and do. it sounds simple, but it's, it's really not, not. And we understand that. And it's not, we're, we're really not the, the people to, to just sit there and just be like, yeah, yeah, it's so great. I'm so strong all the time. No. no, it doesn't work like that. And I get it. And I also feel like I need to mention the highs of happiness. And, you know, because a lot of people talk about how negative thoughts come and go. But happy thoughts as well. Like, you know how good you feel when you're happy? That goes as well. And it goes really quickly. Do you know what I mean? And it it kind of is the same dynamic. You know, good times will go. Bad times will go as well. So you have to look at it in a way of everything just keeps going. Yeah. And it's fine. That's such a good point that you've made, actually. I think that's really important because I know there's been a lot of people who will think that they they've experienced that they've been really really happy and then it passes because it's it's normal and it's natural yeah. for that emotion to pass but then they think that there's something wrong mm. or that they've done something wrong or perhaps a relationship isn't as what it should be because that overwhelming happy feeling isn't there all the time but exactly like you've just said that that's not normal that's not reality same with motherhood as well it's with anything you can apply this to anything in life i mean it's just one of them things that you just as soon as you've acknowledged it and you know it's that's the Mm. case you're gonna have a way much happier life in general overall in all honesty we're all gonna have bad time good times i just think embrace and yeah be happy when you're happy when you've got negative thoughts acknowledge them again know that everything's going to be okay Mm. yet again telling everyone because sometimes i have heard people in the past where it's like yeah everything's going to be fine and people get annoyed with people like that because it's like yeah but you can't just say that it's really annoying like just stop saying that and i get it how it can be annoying but in all honesty it will probably be okay at the end because like, again, with emotions and anything, it keeps going and coming back. So it's trying to kind of level that out, isn't it? Just balance it in the best way possible you can. Nothing's perfect. We can't get it to perfection, but the more we work at it, the better it'll get eventually. I mean, it's just... I I always think that a really good explanation of that and how... I would generally explain mental well-being. I think I've said it before, is it's like on a continuum. So it, it's on a slide and scale. Sometimes, you know, it'll be really low. Sometimes it might move up. And it's about thinking, okay, well, where, where am I? And you, you could use any scale. It, it could be whatever suits you. So if you were to use, you know, a zero to 10 scale where zero is really, really low, and 10 is really, really high. If you're someone that struggles with your emotions or with negative thoughts or being stuck in a rut, it's about just taking each day as it comes, you know, not, not thinking too far in the future, but actually, you know, acknowledging, okay, well, where, where do I feel today on this scale? Yeah. You know, maybe maybe I'm a three today. I'm, I'm not feeling great. What would take me up to a four? And it might be something... Baby steps. Yeah, baby steps. And it might be something as really simple as, you know what, taking me up to a four today would be getting out my pajamas, maybe having a nice shower, washing my hair, and then just getting into a clean pair of pajamas. Yeah, I know. know. That, That might be all, you know, all it takes for one person or for another person. It may be, well, actually, I'm really at a one. And what I need to get to a two is just some company or to speak to somebody okay well how am I gonna do that then because Mm -hmm. realistically 
no one's unless they they know what's going on or you're living with yeah. someone no one's just going to show up at that moment in time and give me what I need I actually need to to go out there and 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 do that for myself and whatever that thing may be that gets you up to that next step you you need to actively take the steps to, to go and do that because you are responsible for your own mental health and well-being you know nobody else is responsible for that we may have had experiences or past experiences that that contribute to how we're feeling but ultimately it's about taking back control of of who you are and, and where you're at at this moment mm-hmm. in time and knowing that you you can have that power over your own life to to make a change and make it better you've just got to want to do it yeah uh, oh that's a big one want to do it because a lot of people don't want to do it that's the thing they think that i've got a thing about usually when people go really low they expect a big high in a way of like this is the only thing is going to get me out of this you know when you're really really low and I just think that's really the wrong way to go around it because if you're constantly going to expect your highs your lows are going to be the worst ever you like you said don't try and get yourself to a 10 for god's sake try and get yourself to two three four take it slowly each day because you're not always going to be able to have go from a one to a 10 and then if it doesn't can you imagine if you always expect that to happen then if when it doesn't happen then you're really low and then you you back into that mentality where you just can't get out of it's managing expectations that's huge so you know it's the same with goal setting when when we are setting ourselves goals and targets things as small as that that you know that's a goal that's a target if you you the goals that you're setting for yourself are unobtainable, yeah, then you're set you're self sabotaging, you're setting yourself up for failing yeah. because it may well be that you know right, I am gonna lose two stone in two months before a holiday, and that really is unrealistic, isn't it for anybody? Uh, yeah, unless you know well anybody really. Um, in a healthy way so it's about thinking what what can you do that that's actually realistic that you can feel a sense of achievement from as well like we said getting a shower washing your hair for example walking to the shops you know getting yourself out there maybe challenging yourself to speak to a stranger if if you you know you don't have anyone immediately around you Mm -hmm. and you can go to a shop and just have a chat about the weather pushing yourself out your comfort zone just small steps Mm -hmm. achievable targets they might they might look insignificant at the time but they're really not they're they're the type of um things that work in the long run again like not a quick fixes are not that's why it's called a quick fix it doesn't last for long it's only a matter of like days or minutes that is going to help you and i just think that the more you work at it and try and you know make this healthy pattern in your life the more it's going to help you in the long run and it does it does help like just little things like for example I was really bad at one point remembering taking my vitamins or like just silly Mm. things like that. And I made the effort every night before I go to bed to put it right next to my... So what I do now, I take my coffee cup, put it onto my machine with my spoon and my everything... Because I know Mm, that then it's there and I'm not going to forget and I'm not going to disappoint myself, but it's making that decision the night before that you're going to do that little step every night in the hopes that one night you'll forget to put it there and then in the morning you'll be like oh it's not there and then so you remember you, to take the it habit or- so it's kind of just like a habit that it'll kind of become a part of your day that like when it's not there and you forgot to do it it alarms you and it goes oh you forgot yeah. about that and then you'll remember but also the neuroscience behind that it works you know exactly how you've just yeah. explained it so the the more that you do something the, the more it's ingrained in your brain, that neural pathway in your brain will start to become automatic because the brain, like we said, it, it likes the easiest route. It likes the quickest route that we know. 
So it'll always lean towards yeah. doing what we've always done. And it's uncomfortable to build new habits yeah. because it takes effort. But the more that you put that effort in, the more repetitive it becomes. Yeah. It's like you said, one day it'll just be, oh, actually, I forgot to do that because it's a new habit that you've built. Mm. So it's really important that whatever you want to achieve, it starts to become that, you know, forced pattern that that you do repetitively over and over. And that takes discipline. Yeah. And I think discipline's such a huge You're not always going to feel like doing it, no. for God's sake. You know, it's just like, you know, we're humans. We all have to, to different ways of coping with things. And it's not, it's just trying to make it easier for yourselves where you, you do all these little steps every day and... I just think that's the most important thing. Little steps, guys. So, don't are you going to come it. to the gym with me at six o'clock? No. Most mornings? <laughs> I'm not going to set that in my calendar for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Put a note on my coffee machine. Gym at six o'clock every morning until in my receptor, my brain might just take it in. <laughs> I, but you know what, though? I did get you there once at seven o'clock yeah. with Sarah. Yeah. And you really, you did really enjoy it. I did actually really enjoy it. And you it. had to spring in your step for the rest know, of the day. I know, I know. I just don't, maybe I should try that a little yeah. bit more often. Well, when I move, I, I'm, I've got no yeah. excuse then. You'll, you'll be on the door, you'll be like, uh, get yourself out of bed right <laughs> now and get in the car yeah. with me. <laughs> And sometimes it just takes that somebody else, doesn't it, as well, to, yeah. to drag you or Literally. twist your arm up your back. Yeah, and just be like, what are you doing? Get yeah. yourself out there. I know you've done it a couple of times and I know you can do it, so stop moaning. <laughs> and I know you can that do that. like us too, though, what we yeah. say to each other. Like, come on, stop sugarcoating everything, just get out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, because we, we hadn't seen each other and then we were, we were talking before, wasn't we? And we actually both pulled each other off over something, didn't we, over a message? You're like, well, actually, I seen in your message that you said this, and I was thinking, really? Well, yeah. I'll wait and see. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just wait and see because this it doesn't sound right. <laughs> and then I said to you that similar thing was situation was, hmm. So tell tell me about this message that you sent. I so know you you really. I knew. I, we, we were talking about something, and she just went right. Stop a minute. What? what's going on here why why are you saying it like this and i was like oh she really got onto it i was like that that's that's great that's great <laughs> observation like i wasn't gonna pull you up in a text message but i thought i'll get you and oh you just ya. wait <laughs> yeah you wait to trap me time. in <laughs> I like, you know, do you know why it was? I thought because she won't be able to lie to me when I see her face. I know, to face, cause I know. she can't lie. <laughs> I know my body language. I mean, I just it's just the worst, isn't it? Like I'm I just lucky and just go, oh shit, she knows. I think as well, you're worse than me, definitely. But we're both those people that literally you can't can, hide. You can't hide no. a thing. And my, my face speaks before me. So how how on earth can I hide? Yeah. If I'm gonna not like something or like something or I'm gonna about, about to say something silly. You see on my face before it's happened? Yeah. It's, like it just my I don't know how I had I don't know how to stop it. It's just resting bitch face. Okay, yeah, resting bitch face, guys. <laughs> Do you know what? I mean, a lot of people think I'm snotty half the times, and I just think, what? You're far from it. I just think it, where's it, this coming from? It's coming from your expression of face. <laughs> Am I, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, there you go. That's, that's, that's what it is. I can't help it. And I just, can't, I don't know what to do about I know. it. And now both of us together, we're both like, um... I know. And we talk, did I say to you before we started filming, not only I said to her, I'm going to have to put some shoes on because my feet are always up in the air when I'm talking. <laughs> not only that I'm talking with my hands like this all the time, now my feet are all over the place. <laughs> it's like, why am I like this? Why can I not just stop? fidgeting when i'm talking yeah. i can't honestly i've literally even today it, my hands I are know. all over the place i can't keep still you know what i find myself doing i like have to sit on yeah. them i know like, like squeeze them in keep them warm <laughs> <laughs> my hands aren't really cold actually i always have cold hands and you just go oh keep them no warm. honestly like I've, I've I've been told this all the time that I've got the coldest hands ever. Maybe my circulation cold is not hands, great. Cold heart. <laughs> honest. I'm honest. 
<laughs> but wow. no, honestly, I think I've enjoyed today. I, I liked it. It was uh, a bit more laid back and... And can I just say how much better I feel I for just for seeing you and spending time mm. with you and getting back into It's been too long. We and... can't leave it this long. Yeah. This is really unhealthy. Almost as long. My as mental health. My, <laughs> last, my last coffee. <laughs> that was so funny. Oh my God. <laughs> right. This morning she just said to me, I was like, oh, do, you want, do you want a coffee before we start? And I said, yes, go on. I can't say no to a coffee. And she just went, she just rubbed her hands like this. She said, I have not had a coffee for such a long time. And I went, what time did you have your last coffee? About three hours ago. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> you sounded was. like you didn't have a coffee for months. It, it actually really was such a long time for me. It felt it like was, three yeah. months actually for you, didn't it? <laughs> it did. But it's the way she said it to me. I was like, are you okay? I thought, did you cut out coffees? And I don't know about this in um, the last uh, two weeks. No. <laughs> but I was so excited to have you back that I got all your favorite things in. Oh, um, she got me my snacks. She got me my snacks. favorite hummus, my olives, the favorite olive bread and favorite sweets oh, they're in the jars right now that i'm gonna have yeah. after and we had a picnic didn't we i know we had a little picnic in the dining room <laughs> <laughs> like i'm getting asked to like, i'm not starting this like i'm not recording if i'm peckish i can't do it i can't think Peck, peckish you know what that word just makes me laugh so Ick. much <laughs> What are you peckish? You be peckish. Are you pecking? I don't know why I said that. Peckish. <laughs> Let's go pecking. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. This is, this, this, is, this is just Elisa. It's finest. Oh, God. Anyway. Anyway, oh. guys, thank you for watching again, for joining us. And, um, you know, you know what to do. Follow, yes. subscribe. It really does help. Yeah, it you know, does. it's to remind you that we're posting another video, and uh, let us know. We've we've asked. Um, we put a question box in we on our stories mm -hmm. on Instagram, and we got quite a bit of questions. Which I think in the next episode we're gonna try and answer as many as we can. Yeah, we wanted today to be more of a little catch up. Didn't yeah, we, we did us. get a lot of questions. I just. I just need to go through them with you, I yeah. think, and just see what we can touch up on because we only have an hour each yeah. episode and it's, and you know. it goes so quickly. Yeah. But we'd really, really love to hear from you. What do you like to hear from us? Mm -hmm. um, and what would you like our topics to focus on over the next month or so? Yeah. But, well, here have we a lovely day have and lovely weekend. Day, well, actually, yeah. it's, it's Friday today, yeah, isn't it? It's so Friday. have a lovely weekend because yeah. we will. And it's sunny. <laughs> we will. I know. I can't wait. Can't I? Now, now I'm ready. Now I'm ready for it. <laughs> now I'm ready. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye.